It's one of life's great pleasures for most of us. Learning to ride a bike is one of the earliest milestones that we carry through, which invariably provides us with our first taste of independence. But as the years advance, the convenience of travelling in four wheels seems to outweigh pedalling too, with the joys of riding a bike becoming somewhat lost in a rat race society. Though in recent time, the popularity of the sport has come full cycle. The popularity of cycling seems to be on the increase. What's your view on it and do you think there is a trend emerging? Oh, definitely there's a trend emerging. Um, I think recently a friend of mine said, said something very funny to me and he said that there's not many sports in the world where you can sit down, have something to eat while you're exercising, have a long chat to your mates um, and still, you know, you can ride for a couple of hours and just shoot the breeze. You, you actually experience the country on a bicycle in a totally different way than in a car. And it, a lot of it is the smells. Sure, you get the dead kangaroo smell, that's not so pleasant. Uh, but, but, you know, the, whether it's blossom on a tree or the cut grass, the, the hay. I think there's the allure of the, um, the colourful bikes and the beautiful carbon and the, you know, the sh all the shiny bits of metal. Um, as well as the, as well as getting yourself into some um, tight lycra, which I think, you know, obviously some people are, think that that's a, you know, <laughs> exciting thing to be doing. The things for me, the beautiful things are early in the morning, going out for a ride just as the sun's coming up, and you get to see, you feel like you're the first person out there in the world, and you're getting to see something absolutely spectacular. Olivia Gollan made her Olympic debut at the Athens Games in 2004. Although she's now retired from full-time riding, her passion for the sport still remains, having become a mentor for a women's riding group. Attracting a range of riders of varying ability, the group aims to improve skills and awareness on the road, as well as develop bunch riding confidence. It's an entry level ride, so we just, the idea is that we ride 35 to 40 kilometres um, at, at an achievable speed, um, have a chat, you know, um, and then go and have some coffee. And it's been a really fantastic, um, a really fantastic thing, great friendships made out of it. And, um, and I think my goal for the women on the, when we're riding is that they just gain confidence. and. And the only way to really do that is just to continue coming and to continue riding in the bunch. Scott Stewart is another cyclist to reach the pinnacle of the sport, having won the green and gold at the 1988 Seoul Olympic Games. He now runs bicycle safety workshops for children and school students with the aim to improve their cycling skills and increase their confidence on a bike. Cycling is a very social activity because you can you, you can be participating in the activity and still be able to talk to people. The other thing is that I think everybody can ride a bike and it is, it's, non, it's a non-impact sport that you can do from, you know, basically as soon as you can walk almost until, you know, I know men and women well into their 80s who are still riding push bikes. You, you feel there's a bit of safety in a group. So there's, you know, groups will go out because you, you know, there's safety in numbers, you're more visible on the road. You mentioned about cycling appealing to a broad spectrum of people. In saying that, do you notice more so people in their early 40s to mid 40s, early 50s to mid 50s participating more so than younger people? Yeah, I do, I do think so, um, yeah. Luke. I think that I think one reason for that is that cycling is quite an expensive sport um, and I think that people in their late 30s, 40s, 50s um, have obviously become more financially secure, they've got a bit more time on their hands, it's kind of that midlife crisis stage, um, they, might be getting, they might be getting to that point where their doctors told them that they need to lose a bit of weight, get, a, get, get fitter um, and running is of, oftentimes too um, too hard on the body to do that, so I think cycling is a really good option. Through its relationship with various government agencies and departments, Bicycle New South Wales is an organisation that represents the interests of recreational cyclists. It engages in a wide scope of activities including events, advocacy, training and education programs, upholding the motto of creating a better environment for cycling in New South Wales. With the growing popularity of cycling, what's been some of the trends that Bicycle New South Wales 
has found. So yes, there's a growth in the 25 plus. We're also seeing a particular um, growth in women and interestingly enough in the 50 plus for men and women. What we do want to now see is that same increase for children because several reports this year have demonstrated that Australian children are not sufficiently active and um, we definitely need to see kids walking and riding to school regularly. From rising transport costs, the need for a healthier lifestyle through to growing traffic queues, it's not hard to see why the bike is becoming a popular choice. With more people now embracing cycling, riders and the sports key bodies believe that infrastructure and driver behaviour are two fundamental aspects that need to be addressed. What about from an educational perspective, from a motorist towards a cyclist and from a cyclist towards a motorist, is the courtesy shown between both parties getting better or does it need improving? It is a two-way street. Um, it's frustrating as a cyclist because there's not that many of us on the road and it's not like a motorist is stuck behind a cyclist for a lengthy period of time before he can pass and it, it frustrates cyclists when we get squeezed or a car will come past exceptionally close. The other thing that Bicycle New South Wales is wanting to remind people is that it's not about motorists versus bicycles, it's about people. And they're, you know, that is somebody's father on that bicycle, that is somebody's mother in that car, that is somebody's children crossing the pedestrian crossings. I would love to see all motorists get out on a bike and just experience it. That would be the first thing because uh, I think once they've been a cyclist or been, ha have ridden on the road and felt what it feels like to have something go past you very fast, very close, um, it would change maybe how they drive. You know, I know just statistics show that it's actually the cyclists doing the wrong thing most of the time. Yeah, right. Um, and I think cyclists need to own that um, and and go, okay, we've got to do the right thing all of the time. The Queensland rule where they've introduced, you know, a metre matters, where motorists are supposed to give cyclists a metre grace on the road, um, apparently that is having some effect in Queensland. Um, you know, if it was introduced here, I'd be very happy to see that. From an infrastructure perspective, where does Australia sit in regards to making provisions for cyclists? Sadly, Australia is, is well behind the rest of the world in terms of our mode share and the bicycle being a um, regular and recognised part of the transport infrastructure and transport solution. I think now with you know, the price of fuel, um, parking, there's a whole f heap of reasons why a bicycle in cities and things like that uh, necessities that we should start to really embrace. We're trying, I'm sure there's, you know, I know Melbourne, Canberra and Sydney to some extent is, you know, doing some great things uh, for cycling to get people out there riding. In Australia we're very, we're still very car centric and we're seeing that in our infrastructure, we're seeing that with the investment. So, so there's a lot we need to do here in Australia to shift that. It's not just on the roads or cycleways where the growth in cycling is being noticed. On any given day, you'll find an array of bikes lining the footpaths and perched out the front of cafes, as cyclists cap off their morning ride with a yarn over a coffee or two. You see the coffee shops full of people, and I, I do believe that the biggest thing about cycling is that it is such a social sport, and, and you can, like I've met so, so many people just riding along you know, and you ride up beside somebody and you can have a chat to them about, you know, the weather or, you know, where they come from or... And you don't, you don't really do that in any other sport, really, like ride up to a complete stranger and, and chat. And so I think that's it's really unique and it's really very special too. It's vital. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's... We start smelling the coffee you know, not long after we start sometimes and we're, and we're thinking about when, when's that next coffee or where is the first coffee coming from. Um, so that's, you know, that's a big part of, of cycling is stopping at a coffee shop. There is a increasing demand 
for uh, better facilities for cyclists and you, you know you're seeing it through the increase in media attention that it's getting but you just see it on your streets in your cafes um, the number of bicycle shops that are opening whether it be for social physical or perhaps for convenience the pastime of riding a bike has never been more prevalent as the cycling renaissance looks certain to remain there's no greater time to suit up in some lycra dust off the old two-wheeler and embrace the great outdoors on a bike